Hey guys, it's me again, and today I'm going to be telling you about Stephens and Vin's law. Okay, so Stephen and Vin, uh, this is still on astrophysics. Um, so we spoke about the luminosities of the stars, the apparent uh, um, absolute magnitude, the brightness of the stars, and how we can use all of these to calculate distances. And these two laws are going to tell you uh, and relate the luminosity of the star with the surface area and the temperature, and the other one with the color of the star, okay? So starting with Stefan's law. Stefan's law says that power equals this symbol times the A, uh, this is the sigma, times A times T squared, um, sorry, to the power of 4. So P stands for the total power radiated by the star, so it's going to be the luminosity in watts, okay? The sigma is a constant, is the Stefan's, Bolt, uh, Stefan, sorry, Boltzmann constant, and is equal to 5.67 times 10 to the power of minus 8 watts meters, uh, uh, per meter squared uh, Kelvin minus 4, okay? So watts meters minus 2, Kelvin minus 4. A is the star's surface area, and again, I forgot to put there, the, it should be meters squared and not meters to the power of minus 2. And finally, T is the star's surface temperature that should be in Kelvins. So, Stephen's Law says that um, the power of my star, so the luminosity, and therefore, you know, the absolute magnitude of my star, is going to depend on the temperature of the star and the surface area where this temperature can come out, so where the star can radiate the energy. Wien's law, as I told you, is going to relate to the temperature of the star with the color that the stars will have, okay? So Wien's law says that the temperature, the star's surface temperature in Kelvin, is equal to 2.90 times 10 to the power of minus 3, and if I use 10 to the power of minus 3, that constant, I get lambda maximum, so the maximum wavelength, so the peak wavelength comes in meters, okay? So again, lambda maximum is the wavelength in the spectrum of the star, which corresponds to the peak intensity function of the radiation spectrum in meters, because I use 10 to the power of minus 3, okay? So, this, um, uh, what was I going to say? So this fancy wording, this just means the color of the star, okay? You will know more. There's going to be a video about the spectrum of the star. So you will know more what I mean when I say the spectrum. But basically, I just say it relates the temperature with the color of the star. As an exercise, I want to know, for example, the power output for the sun and for a red giant, okay? Sun and red giant. The area of the sun is 6 times 10 to the power of 18 meters squared, area because I'm talking about the surface area that is facing, you know, outside, and the area for the red giant is 3 times 10 to the power of 19 meters squared. Temperature of the sun uh, and the surface is 6,000 Kelvin. In the red giant is a cooler star, is 4,000 Kelvin, okay? Blue stars are hotter than yellow, they are hotter than reds. So, I just use this first formula. Let me go back on the slides. I just use this Stefan formula, okay? Stefan's law. And all that I do is substitute the values. So, the constant is a constant. Then, I multiply by the area and times by the temperature to the power of 4. If you do that, you see that I can have a small star that is hotter that has the exactly the same power as a red star that, that is uh, cooler, okay? The only difference is, is what one loses in terms of heat, the other one gets more in terms of area, okay? So both of them will have 4 times 10 to the power of uh, 26 watts. Now, all stars are black body radiation, okay? So you can assume that a star is a black body and that it will give you a black, a black body radiation curve. And this is how they look like, okay? Again, I'm showing here Wien's law because this is related with Wien's law. And now you can see that I, instead of having 2.90 times 10 to the power of minus 3, let me just go back two slides to show you, which would give me the wavelength in meters. Now I have... 3 times 10 to the power of 6, 
and it will give me the wavelength in nanometers okay again it doesn't matter I just need to be careful which units I'm using so as an exercise I did say and you feel free to pause the slides I say you know just look at the pictures and write as many conclusions as you can now some conclusions that you may have noticed so pause the video if you want to do this by yourself a star that is blue is hotter than a star that is yellow that is hotter than a star that is red and here are the wavelengths a hotter star will also have higher peaks okay peak for the blue peak for the yellow peak for the red the hotter the star is the smaller the wavelength where the peaks are so this peak is earlier than the peak in yellow that is earlier than the peak in red okay there are other conclusions so these ones are pretty good uh, there are other conclusions we might not have noticed yet so let me show you all the conclusions as written okay so I told you about the blue star being hotter than a yellow that is hotter than a red the hotter the star the higher the peak the hotter the star the shorter the maximum intensity wavelength the star's temperature is inversely proportional to the wavelength of maximum intensity or peak frequency that's all good we saw that already for a hotter star for example that blue one the area under the graph is greater this shows that the luminosity of the star is greater as well and finally for a hotter star the peak frequency is greater and this produces a greater proportion of radiation of higher frequencies five and six are not as easy to spot from those graphs okay so feel free to go back in order to those graphs in a video so these are some good conclusions if you look at the black body radiation spectrum or black body radiation curve for the stars okay so that's on Vin's law and you already know Stefan's law um, as well so I'm gonna have here three questions from BoardWorks okay so this is not done by me uh, this is not my PowerPoint let's say the previous stuff was but this particular slide is not so uh, questions on uh, brightness Stefan's and probably Vin's law I know there are three questions in here so first one if the apparent magnitude m small m of the sun is minus 27 what is the absolute big m uh, magnitudes okay so I use the formula that I showed you in the last video so the one and about absolute magnitude and I would get 4.6 how do I do it I write the equation small m apparent magnitude minus big m absolute magnitude is equal to 5 times the logarithm base 10 of the distance over 10 okay as I told you this can be viewed as this way or an m equals another m plus 5 minus 5 logarithm of um, the distance and I can do a video in future to show you how this works okay so how do you go from one formula to the other so you know the distance uh, in astronomical units make it into parsecs okay because this formula works for parsec rearrange the equation and calculate big M so I get apparent magnitude minus 5 logarithm of the distance in parsecs 4.85 times 10 to the power of minus 6 um, and then and this would be hmm funny oh because they divided by 10 already uh, and then you would divide it by 10 so 4.85 times 10 to the power of minus 7 this would give you 4.6 there are no units for magnitudes okay another question what is the luminosity of a star of temperature 5000 Kelvin with a surface area of 6.09 times 10 to the power of 18 meters squared now I use Stefan's law okay I'm going to use Stefan's law that says power or luminosity equals the Stefan and Spoltzmann constant times the area surface area of the star times the temperature to the power of 4 so I do that I'll calculate P so 5.67 times 10 to the power of minus 8 for the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the area surface area 6.09 times 10 to the power of 18 times the temperature to the power of 4 4 point uh, 4500 to the power of 4 and this would give me 1.42 times 10 to the power of 26 watts finally the last question 
What is the flux of a star of luminosity 1.42 times 10 to the power of 26 from a distance of one astronomical unit? So this one, I'm going to use that formula that says that the flux equals the power divided by 4 pi distance squared. So I wrote down the, um, the equation. Because this distance is in meters, I get this astronomical unit into meters. So one astronomical unit is 1.50 times 10 to the power of 11 meters. I substitute all the numbers into the equation and I get the flux of 502 watts per meter squared or watts meter minus 2. Okay? So that's all about Stefan's and Vin's law plus some uh, practice questions. Okay? And I'll see you in another video. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to relate the star's color, temperature, and the uh, HR diagram. All right, so see you very soon. And where I am, I'm here. So take care. Bye.